What's the word, y'all? It has been two. Count them, two preseason games. And Victor Wimbanyama has already broke my brain. Now, Wimby is the most anticipated NBA player to enter the draft since 2003, since LeBron James. That is higher expectations than Anthony Davis, who um, people were tanking heavily. A team won seven total games against Anthony Davis and didn't get him. Anthony Davis, Zion Williamson, even Wiggs. Like, we've seen so many top number one overall players with crazy amount of hype. And none of them is even half the amount of hype as Victor Wibanyama. It was so crazy that we were talking about on my podcast, the Kenny Beatson podcast. I'm going to plug it every episode. I promise I'm going to plug it every single video here. Now, based on the expectations... Failing, what like failing to live up to the expectations is probably more likely than exceeding those expectations. And that can mean he ends up being a top 10 player in the NBA for 10 plus years. But that might not hold up to what the hype was. Like there, there's a, a good article that I read years ago about LeBron James. And, and the question was, how good can LeBron have been and still been a disappointment? And the answer was, he could have been probably a 10-time All-Star. Couple all NBA player have a really, really successful NBA career and still be a disappointment based on the hype surrounding him. And that hype is kind of the same for Wimby. Now we're talking about Wimby two games to his professional NBA career and they're preseason games at that. But boy, oh boy. Am I excited to watch real meaningful minutes of Victor Wimbanyama? This is a player that is seven foot four, seven foot five, depending on where you're looking, that can hezzy tween mid range jump shot, three point jump shot, make the passes that he should not make, guard two players in the in the paint. There's one specific play from last night against the Miami Heat where I'm pretty sure it was Thomas Bryant hit the ball on one of the blocks and Wimby's there with his hands up. There's another player on the opposing block, nobody around him. Thomas Bryant has the, the, I guess, vision to pass it to the other block. And Wimby just turns around, does like this, and gets the block. Has he mid-range jump shot, pull up three in transition, run the break like a gazelle, and can ev eventually be one of the most impactful defensive players in all the ball. Again, I, I, I want y'all to really internalize that this is me saying this. I am a guy that has always preached, give the young players time. Because if a person comes into the league with a bunch of hype and they aren't one of the best players immediately, oh, that guy's a bust. Oh, that guy's not as good as we thought he could be. I've always seen get these boys three to four years before we really start to gauge who they are as NBA players. So me saying this, that I'm getting into the hype in two games, it's insane. Now, I was a person that uh, was was thinking when it came to Victor Wembanyama that it might take a little bit of time before his offense really hit the NBA level and is efficient and effective and things like that. Not that he was going to average six points per game, but I don't think he would be a guy that could come in and immediately be a, a spark plug offensively. He's done that through two preseason games. I thought he was more going to lay his hat on the defensive side of the ball immediately. Like, there are some defensive prospects that I can look at and say from the first second they step on the court, he's going to be a positive defender and again rookies don't really have that normally he was one of the exceptions where I thought based on the film and based on watching him in summer league that even if his shot is never falls let's just for whatever reasons it's space jam they, they take his powers away but only on the offensive side of the ball he is going to be good enough to be a starting center in the league strictly based on his defense or power four if you want to call him that but if the offense is looking as good as it has looked through these first pre two preseason games this is a dangerous man again I want to preface this by saying we're talking two preseason games the first one against Chet Holmgren who is a, a very similar build and stature to him the second one was against the second unit of the Miami Heat so I understand he hasn't played against Jokic, Joel Embiid, uh, Draymond Green or uh, Demontis Sabonis, Val Lentunis, players that would be bruisers to him like I don't know how he handles that type of stuff but since this man has guard skills then I don't know how much of that is going to matter against his offensive game I'm more worried about like okay if he does have to guard Jokic for a full time, which I don't feel like that's going to happen a ton because they feel comfortable with playing him alongside a guy like Zach Collins to play the full official five. But we just haven't seen him play against the top end talent just yet. But I'm just saying, based on the two games, he's doing stuff I haven't seen a singular NBA player do. And then the question is, OK, if, if Wimby is doing stuff like this, this translates to the regular season. How, how good could the Spurs be? Because right now, um, they're anticipated to be another team that is towards the bottom of the Western Conference because their core right now is Wimby. It is Devin Vassell, probably the top two guys. It's Jeremy Keldon, Trey Jones. It's like the real core. Malachi Branham, uh, which they really like. It's like six guys in the core, but none of them dudes have hit the stardom level, all-star level, or even borderline all-star level. Wimby's this good. 
and this good defensively where he can potentially hold it down and play perimeter defense. And his perimeter defense is different than the best perimeter defenders in ball. His defense is, I'm gonna, I can give you all of this room because my wingspan is 37 feet. Try to beat me off the dribble. I'm going to recover. In the first game against the OKC Thunder, J-Dub beat this man off the dribble a couple different times just for Wimby to recover and either cause a miss or block a shot. So far, they've done a ton of like pick and pops with him. And through the first two games, both teams have decided to kind of let Wimby shoot. I think he's shooting 30% from three um, through the first two preseason games, but the shot looks fluid. I don't know if he'll end up being higher than 30 in the regular season. But he's taken them enough for them to say, like, okay, eventually we might have to respect that. Run a full break, get the ball to the three-point line, take two steps, no dribbles, Euro step into the basket. Like, there are, there are so many things that this man has showed us through two preseason games already. In my opinion, the only thing that stands in the way from Wimby being as good as he could potentially be is the fact that he's a 7'4", 7'5", big, and historically those guys haven't been able to stay healthy. I'm going to knock on wood on that. Hopefully he's the exception because if he is robbed of a good prime or multiple seasons, I think we're robbed as the viewer. I didn't really anticipate that he was going to be as fun to watch as he has been through the first two games. Like there are players that I respect as NBA players and are really good players, but I don't necessarily see them as fun. He is, he is like, a video game character come to life. I remember when we were getting like MVP Kevin Durant and one of the conversations was like Kevin Durant is so crazy that if you load it up 2K13 and you put to my player or whatever, create a player, you could not create a player that was Kevin Durant because he was 6'10 to 7 foot or 6'9 if you ask him to 7 foot and can do everything really. Wimby is 7'4", seven, 7'5". Seven, <laughs> and of course, not doing it to Kevin Durant's level because Kevin Durant's one of the greatest scorers of all time. But he's doing things that 2K would not allow you to do. He is a legitimate video game character. Some people might call him a unicorn. I wouldn't do that because I think unicorns kind of dried out at this point. I don't think there's unicorns. I think LeBron James called him alien, which is kind of, kind of cool. Here is the defensive play I referenced earlier. As you can see, I think that is, is that Thomas Bryant? I, I, I don't even, I can't tell. It's somebody on the, on the Miami Heat. You see, there's nobody close to this man on the other block. Wimby sees this guy's like, no, I'm not gonna prevent, I'm not gonna let you go up. Then he makes the pass. Wimby just makes the one step and catches it. And, and that's a block. Oh, the Thomas Bryant and Jamal Kane. Also, I always joke about who's gonna be the next guy on the Miami Heat to just come out of nowhere and be really good. Jamal Kane. <laughs> it might be that guy. It might be that guy. It's also insane the influence that the NBA understands or is trying to build with Victor Wibanyama. The NBA is different than any other league in the world because the way they sell things and the way they market their sport and their league is based on the names. And that's one of the main reasons why we're seeing those policies come in where you can't rest a certain amount of time. Because because as a league, we would rather see Kawhi Leonard and not the LA Clippers. While there's other leagues across the world, whether it be soccer or this or this, I'm okay with watching Arsenal play even if uh, soccer's not playing. You know what I'm saying? In the NBA, it's not like that. Where there's genuine times for me as, the, as a viewer, we see Clippers versus Suns, oh, I'm hyped. And then I realize that Paul George or Kawhi is not playing. I'm like, I'm a little bit less hyped. So the NBA recognized who Victor Wembanyama was, and even before he stepped foot on the NBA court, they bought the rights to stream his games with the Metropolitan 94. Is it 94 or 96? Like they said, that is the guy that we want to build the next 10 years of fandom through. Think about it. This man was playing in an entirely different league, and the NBA, as far as I know, has never bought the rights to stream another league until this man existed. This man is the NBA's next generation superstar. Even if he on the court is not that, they're, they're branding their league after it. And that is an immense amount of pressure to put on one person, but based on the interviews with J.J. Redick a few months ago, he doesn't feel that type of pressure. I, I, I envy that kind of stuff. Because I'm on a very lesser scale, I <laughs> I feel pressure to do the things that I do with the companies that I work with. This man is trying, like they're trying to make him the face of basketball in a couple years, and he's like, I'm good. I'm just going. I just got a hoop. That's something I I want to do. And the amount of freedom they give him to be the point guard. That is the role he has played in a lot of these games. Now, I understand that Trey Jones is on the floor, Denver Sale. A lot of these players can play make. Even, even Jeremy Sohan got some reps at point guard last season. But he brings the ball up the court on this play. A lot of stuff, a lot of, um, uh, I guess, people paying attention to him. Boom, straight to the basket. This is, of course, a designated play. 
and the lob comes and how do you guard that? How do you guard it? How do you guard this one? Where you have a significantly smaller player and Haywood Highsmith is a good defender in my opinion um, in this limited amount of time. Boom, swim move as if he's a DN, gets behind the line of defense, and it's just throw it up, and he's going to make the rest happen. you got to foul him. And the best thing that could possibly happen uh, for us NBA fans is that he was drafted to an organization and one of the greatest coaches, if not the greatest coach of all time, that will do whatever is necessary to put him in the position to be great, to give him different looks to develop as an NBA player. Right? There are some organizations, I won't name names, where you might not be able to see the point guard version of Wimby or the version that's a small forward or the version that's a center because we saw all of those versions of him in this one game alone. The creativity level throughout the Spurs organization throughout the last 30 years has been real and he's inserted into that. The one thing I cannot wait for is for them to build out the rest of the roster over the years where this team is really competing for playoff spots and stuff like that, where he has a really good number two, and maybe that number two is already on the roster right now, but I'm just excited about the future of Wimby and the Spurs. I don't know. This is not a video I would normally make. Like, th look at the history of this channel. It's, it's very rare that one specific person gets a full 10-minute video of me gushing about how good they looked in the preseason, but that's how hype I am. Um, I don't know if you, you share that same sentiment, but this is going to be crazy. Um, leave a like, subscribe if you knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah.